I looked, I looked around in the in the in the cell, and I said, "Wow, you know, I really do deserve better than this," <laughs> you know. And um, I really took it upon myself to really make the effort to change. Welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. This is episode 157, and thanks for dropping by. On today's episode, we hear from Arnis and Jiu-Jitsu practitioner from Massachusetts, Sensei Roberto Davila. At Whistlekick, we make the world's best sparring gear. Here on Martial Arts Radio, we bring you the best podcast on the traditional martial arts two times every week. Welcome. My name is Jeremy Lesniak, and I'm your host for the show, as well as the founder of Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel. Thank you to the returning listeners, and welcome to those of you checking us out the very first time. I hope you like what you hear. Have you ever been afraid of ordering something online because you were afraid of getting the wrong size? Well, not only does our sparring gear have a more accurate size chart than other companies, but we offer free returns on all purchases, so you're guaranteed to get the right size at the best price. Find all of our gear and everything else we offer at whistlekick.com. You can also find our show notes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, which is also the easiest place to sign up for our newsletter. I had heard stories of today's guest months before I had spoken with him, months even before a listener to the show suggested him and introduced us. The martial arts world can be very small, as many of you know, and today's interview again reminds me of that. I've known Sensei Davila's instructor for some time, as we were introduced by a few past guests, but now here we are talking with him. Sensei Davila holds nothing back in this episode as he talks about two very different stages in his life. Early on, he was a troubled youth, engaged in some of the worst behavior someone can engage in. After finding martial arts, however, he changed. This dramatic shift is seen in the stories he tells and the emotion with which he tells them. It is an honest, open, and thoughtful episode that I hope you'll enjoy. Sensei Davila, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's an honor to have you. I appreciate your time out today. We're having a snowy day up here. You're not having any snow down your way, even though you're really only about three hours away. So we'll, 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 <laughs> we'll see. see what happens later. That's right. Who, who knows? We, we may be on, <laughs> on the phone long enough here that it, it changes down your way. Hopefully I, I don't get snowed in. It's coming down kind of hard. <laughs> uh, uh, of course, we've got you on today to talk about martial arts, to hear about who you are as a martial artist. And before we can really do any of that, before we can dig into any stories, it's helpful to know who you are as a martial artist and how you got started. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? How did you get started in the martial arts? Okay, so um, I um, I grew, you know, I grew up in a broken house, um, you know, broken home um, in Puerto Rico, and uh, you know, I. I kind of had no guidance because, you know, my mother and, and my brothers, they all left to the United States and I was left in, in Puerto Rico, you know, with my grandmother and my younger sister and, you know, um, having no guidance at all. So I just started like, you know, meeting the streets. And so uh, eventually, when, after a few years, I, you know, when I was like 16, um, I came to my mother sent for me, so I came to the United States and I did, you know, went back to school and didn't, you know, at that time, didn't quite like, you know, if, if I, I didn't fit in sort of like speak because I was already, you know, I was already in the streets and that kind of took an influence on me. So I kind of dropped out of school and then I, I turned, you know, I turned my life into the crime you know life and so i did a lot of you know unpleasant things you know um but there was one day um you know after doing so many like crimes and and doing some bad things out out in the street um finally you know the court got a hold of me and they sent me to like uh a counselor, they sent, they forced me actually to do some uh, counseling. They forced me to go to meetings and things like that, like AA meetings, NA meetings, and uh, Alan and all this like meetings. And until one day, even though I was doing, even though I was doing um, drugs and I was into alcohol and uh, 
pretty much I did became an alcoholic. Um, one day I actually, you know, decided, you know, really that it was enough because even though I was to, I was going to these meetings and things like that, I was still going out and drink and do all this crazy stuff. And one day I went, you know, I was in prison and I just like said, um, you know, um, I looked, I looked around in the, in the, in the cell and I said, wow, you know, I really do deserve better than this, <laughs> you know? And, um, I really took it upon myself to really make the effort to change. And so after I, you know, I was out, um, I started going to the meetings and, and, you know, doing the meetings and all this stuff all over again. But this time, nobody was forcing me. This time, I took it upon myself to do so. So, you know, I stopped, I stopped drinking. I stopped doing drugs. I stopped, you know, stealing, robbing people, doing all this craziness stuff. And I found myself that I had a lot of time for myself, you know, because I wasn't really, I wasn't, course I wasn't in school or anything and I joined this um, gym that was uh, back in days um, 1988 it was um, on in the south end um, in the corner of Tremont and Berkeley Street it was called Pete's Power Gym Um, so I joined this gym and I I was, you know, I got into, I got a nice job where I'm at Mass General, and then I joined this gym. Until it, the joint, the the gym was like really, really small, and so I was like, you know, one day I'm lifting weights, and uh, my teacher up to this day, Pete, you know, Peter Feetman, uh, he says, you know, he stands in the middle of the gym and says. Everybody puts the weights and the equipment away. We're gonna do my, we're gonna do martial arts. So I was like, whoa, well, you know, what kind of gym is this? You know, because I at the time, you know, when I started, I didn't see this till this day. And then they started. Everybody just started moving all the equipment away. You know, getting out of the out of the floor or in the middle of the floor because, like I said, it was a very small gym. And I asked you, you know, if I could stay and watch. And he said, yeah, you could join in if you want to. I said, no, I want to really watch what you what you guys are doing. And so everybody ran in the back of the gym and, and, and started pulling out. Everybody came out with, like, mats and putting all this floor, you know, hooking up all the mats on the floor and all this, like, great stuff. And I was like, wow, you know, this is this looks, like, really exciting. So, you know, I stuck around and I saw what they were doing. Um, they were doing, they started doing Ketsugo Jiu-Jitsu. Um, and I was like, wow, you know, I was really impressed by what I saw because the way they used to train, it was like being in like a, in book camp, like an army style kind of thing because all the warming up that we're doing. But they were training for four hours, four hours every day. So I asked, you know, I asked Mr. Peter Freeman, I said, hey, what do I do to like, you know, join in? He said, well, you know, this is how much it costs. And, you know, you just got to show up. And so I did. And this is, you know, from like 1988 to like, you know, this year, 2016, still, I'm still doing, you know, and he's still my teacher, of course. Um, and that's how I, you know, I always say I didn't find martial art, martial art found me, you know, and it has totally changed, you know, my my life completely, you know, nowadays I, I have, I, I, I have met so many positive people, so many good people that, you know, I'm really, you know, really impressed by the change. And I, you know, I really, I'm very happy about it. Wow. That... Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's really, yes. So, so something that they, that you didn't know and that I was a little bit unsure about is that I've actually heard quite a few stories about you from Sensei Friedman on an episode mm-hmm. that for technical reasons got lost. It We did an entire episode. This was probably six weeks ago and it didn't uh, record the software that I use. Something got messed up, but okay. he never, you know, he referred to you by name, but you know, we didn't talk about where you are or any of your background. He just, he told some stories that involved you. And unfortunately, you know, this, this isn't, it's not something I can go back and, and bring up. But when 
you were referred in to me by by someone else, right? I mean, it wasn't Sensei Friedman who told me about you. It was someone completely different. When I, when I saw the name on the email, I said, I wonder if this is the same person. So this mm-hmm. is kind of fun because I'm able to to put a couple pieces together, and I apologize to the listeners that you're not able to do the same thing. Uh, we are, you know, we're, we're working on rescheduling. Sensei Friedman has uh, kind of a hectic schedule, and we're we're trying to get him back on, and, and he's willing, and so it'll happen. And I've got a feeling he'll tell some of the same stories. So if you listen to this episode, you'll be you'll be able to get some some more background on today's guest. But wow, I mean, this is quite the transformation. Talking about being in Puerto Rico and and really coming from a pretty difficult position. I mean, we've had others on the show that have come from difficult positions and, and yours is, is as challenging as any, certainly. I mean, I don't want to rank anybody. I, I don't think that that's appropriate. But you made quite the turnaround. And so here you are, you know, martial arts found you. I like the way that you put that. And absolutely, and it sounds like you were ready for it. You know, you didn't. If if I I understood the times correctly, you didn't come here and continue the the bad behavior that you had. Find martial arts, and martial arts fixed you. You started to fix yourself. You started to walk a better path. Absolutely. Uh, so I made. Um, you know, I. It, it, like when I have like come came from Puerto Rico before, I I was already you know I was already it was a, I you know, I was already into like doing all this like little drugs that you know pe- you know as growing up I was the age like from fourteen and to like sixteen I I turned into like you know doing all this like crazy stuff that they do in Puerto Rico inhaling like you know um, thinner you know card you know that, that card. Um, taking the paint off and stuff like that. They yeah. use that a lot, a lot, like 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 glue, you know. Mm-hmm. So I already was in the life of the, you know, in in the crime life situations. When so when I came up, I try to change that, you know. But again, you know, it's like being alone and kind of, uh, I would say, kind of abandoned in a way, you know, because that kind of grows, kind of start growing inside of you and then having older you know brothers and not having a model that would lead you in the in the right direction and so you know i i tried that but then i bumped into other people who kind of supported me out out in the street and people most of the time refers us like you know gang members we were not really a gang you know it, we were not really a gang. We were just friends that got together and and we were just like, you know, doing things that you know other people are doing nowadays. And you know, um, and and the the, the lifestyle you know kind of fit. So I just kind of let, left the school behind and started like you know doing crazy stuff because, and I if there's anyone listening, I really do apologize because. You know, you don't know any better. Um, um, once you start, you know, you become an alcoholic or, you know, you start doing drugs, you know, a lot of people think that it's just a habit and it's not. It's actually really a disease because I actually just uh, graduated recently from uh, a program for alcohol and uh, and drug abuse. Uh, to become a counselor, I took the de- um, the test in December. Hopefully, I'll find out, you know, whether I pass or not in January. And um, it taught me so much about, you know, what these diseases, you know, the chemicals in alcohol, the drugs that you don't know, the streets in the drug streets or the street drugs. I mean, um, they put chemicals in there that really structurally changes your brain and, and chemicals in your brain totally change. So with that saying, it's like, you know, India was no longer the India that came from Puerto Rico, you know, before doing drugs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was completely a totally different person. So, you know, and I actually learned that through all the, you know, through this program and, and this program taught me a lot about, you know, 
people who actually shoot, you know, heroin and, and, and do like cocaine and things like that and, and totally changed me again. You know, it, it changed me to the, out, you know, to the view of, you know, of how I look at these people nowadays is totally different than before. People are really, really, really quick to judge. Oh, so-and-so is doing this because they want to do it. No, it's not like that. People actually have to educate themselves, and really, that's one of the biggest issues that people don't want to take the time to educate themselves and find out why it is that people do what they do. You know, um, I mean, and I'm talking about, of course, the people out, out in the street. And, of course, you have, like, all kinds of different people. Some people, that just like, you know, their parents don't want to reinforce the rules or, you know, if you live under my roof, then this is what you got to do or, you know, and, 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 you know, I, I don't want to kind of keep on like, you know, I'm not trying to judge, but a lot of the, a lot of the problems is because of the system that we live in under nowadays, you know, you want to, you want to, um, guide your son or your daughter to do better in school and now the younger generation have to say about, okay, you hit me or you touch me or you punish me and I'm going to be doing worse and I'm going to, you touch me and I'm going to put you in jail. And then people are like, oh man, you know what? I don't want to go to jail. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but, and the system, you know, itself promotes this kind of thing, you know, it's like, well, you know, you touch this, you know, a, a bad apple, you know, it, it damaged all the, you know, the whole tree because now look at, look at what we're at. Yeah. You know, yeah, without it, without it out. Absolutely. You know, we all go through our own struggles and I think that's one of the things that I like about martial arts. One of the reasons I like that these subjects come up on this show is it helps us realize that we all struggle and our struggles are different and, you know, somebody's struggle, you know, biggest challenge may seem small compared to someone else's. It may seem daunting to compared to another, but it, that doesn't matter because they're our own challenges. And it's, you know, it's, it's about growing as an individual. And that's really what I think martial arts is about. I, th I don't know if you would agree. It's about growing as a person. I agree. I totally agree to that. You know, it's not, because one... we're not just beating on each other. <laughs> No, well, you know, that's, that's the other thing because you have like, you know, different people, you know, in the martial art, you know, and I'm not, I'm not judging, you know, I'm not putting this out there to judge anyone, but it's, it's more, it's, you know, for people to be more like open their eyes, people who decide to go into a school and see someone who just like likes, you know, get, get, get this urge or this ego on like hurting your student, you know, um, you know, you have to, like, be careful with that because, you know, a lot of people, they do, you know, and I'm not, again, I'm not judging, but a lot of people say, okay, I'm going to learn self-defense. Well, self-defense, we, you know, we as humans, you know, we, we know self-defense. That's who we are, you know, uh, survival is. In the wild, if we, you know, if we, won't, if we were left to, like, be in the wild, you know, all alone and, you know, we'll find a way because this is part of who we are. We, we will find a way on how to survive, yeah. you know, but then when you go into martial art and you have a, a, a an instructor who teaches completely by, you know, hurting their, their students or, you know, breaking something, there's, you know, the accidents do happen, but when you do it intentionally, that's not an accident, you know? And so you have to be really careful and you have to like, you know, see what this guy is all about. Is it, is he about like really growing along with you, help you grow? You know, it's like, it's like taking on a child, you know, you're going to teach him how to take the first steps. And from there, you're going to teach him, you know, how to balance, right? Take the first steps and, and kind of build this, this model and, and kind of, guide him to understand himself as a martial artist, you know, not to become unlike you, you know, maybe you say, yeah, I want to be, no, don't be like me. I want you to be like you. I want you to understand who you are. I want you to understand your abilities and, and what motivates you 
and, and, and what abilities you possess within yourself that you can actually be, you know, confident about what you're going to do and what you're going to dish out, you know. But along with that, you also have to, you know, teach them the control and the respect that comes along with it. Yeah. I think we've got a pretty good idea of who you are at this point. I mean, sometimes, not not often, not usually, do we get this much about who our guests are at the beginning. So I appreciate that, and I think that this is going to be really good moving forward because we've got a lot of context. You okay. told us a ton. I mean, there there were a lot of stories, a lot of things that wove together there, and I and I love that. I, I tell guests as they're getting ready to come on the show, listeners, you, you may or may not know this, that I love the tangents. I think that that's where the best stuff comes from, and we certainly wandered a bit there. But I want to pull it back for a second, and okay. I want you to think about all the stories you have. And if you've known Sensei Friedman as long as you have, I'm sure you've got a ton of stories because he's quite the story guy. I mean, he's he's lived kind <laughs> of an incredible martial arts life. And I'd like you to think of your best martial arts story and tell us about that. My best martial arts story. Um, well, I think that my best martial arts story, it's, you know, it has been... Um, It has been other the places that we have, like at the beginning, we used to do a lot of seminars and, um, you know, we used to meet, you know, different types of like people and, and quite, you know, the differences on, on people and, 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 you know, how good and some, you know, some of them, they're like, you know, um, I say a bit kind of ignorant in a way, um, but um, it, it's been kind of like a journey. And 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 what I my best martial arts story is how he took me under his wing and kind of made me his private. Okay, because um, well, I can as far as I can remember. Uh, one day he's, you know, he was in the dojo and he said, you know, he was explaining something and he said, that, you know, if when I'm he, when I'm standing up here, you should all be fighting to get in front of me for, you know, for one for me to demonstrate what you know what I'm talking about. And so ever since that day, I took it up on myself to like push everybody out of the way <laughs> to become that person. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I, I was so eager to like get like really, really learn so much, which I did, you know, I became really good at what we were doing. And before, you know, it was, it was really kind of like rough because there was a lot of rough people, you know, there were a lot of, you know, like in a, like in combat, you know, you got people who like really train really hard and but you know you have to be careful with that um but then you know things do have you know things do evolve and that's what this has like taken place now we train totally different so um i think that's one of my best experience um the you know the taking over <laughs> taking over of like you know being the okay the yeah. private okay yeah and and i think for for those of you that might not be familiar with japanese terms uke is kind of the um the person being demonstrated on the throwing dummy if you if exactly you and depending on the school that position can be um you know very very respected and when you have someone who is a um, a very intense martial artist and an intense instructor, such as Sensei Friedman, um, being the the chosen throwing dummy can can get a little um, you you can get a little banged up. <laughs> I think is probably the best way you the can. best way to put it. So, to, but I, I think we all know that experiencing something firsthand makes you much better able to do it. Absolutely. So that there's, there's a lot of honor in there. 
So it was it was really an honor for me, you know, to like become that person because as you said, you quite you do learn so much more than actually trying to, you know, make a technique because the people that are that's actually trying to do the technique is trying to figure it out where to go. Mm. The people that actually, you know, the technique is being done onto, you know, it's actually following where you're driving them to. You know, okay. so that person you doesn't have to like really figure much. They just have to just go with the flow. Right. Now I know how important Sensei Friedman is to you. I, I know how important anybody's first instructor is to them. But if I was to ask you if there was anyone else that was really helpful, really important, inspirational, whatever you will, in, just somebody that really mattered over the course of your martial arts career, which is, I mean, you said 1988, so we're coming up on 30 years. Who, okay. Who would that be? <laughs> this is a really, this is a really hard question for me to answer because this is the funniest thing. You know, let me explain a little something. Um, in the book of like Five Rings, it says that, you know, when you choose a martial art, right, you know, it has to be a martial art that's suitable for you, you know, because again, everybody's just not fit to do capoeira or everybody's not fit to do, you know, uh, jujitsu or everybody's not fit to do whatever, you know, different taekwondo, for example, right? And so, it says, you know, for you to choose, you know, a martial art that suits you that, you know, that you can evolve into it. And then after that, you know, you can't, you know, after like 10, being in that one martial art for 10, 15 years to thoroughly understand what it is that you're doing, you know, all the principles and the concepts and the ideas and, you know, all this creativity, then you can move on to do other martial arts you know, and, and kind of pick and choose your, you know, and other techniques and other, you know, views, because even though everything down, everything boils down to the same thing, you know, like fighting, right. Um, they have different approach. They have different ways of moving. They have different, you know, uh, um, aspects of how they're going to get in on someone, you know, like wrestling or, you know, Kung Fu, Chin, uh, China, all this stuff. And so you pick and choose whatever, you know, you can pull out of that system and put it in the bag of tricks, right? So this is the this is the fun part of what I have done. I have stuck with Mr. Freeman for the past, you know, going on, like you said, on thirty years. And so um Freeman's method has been the greatest because I have not had to like jump from place to place to find other teachers because what he has done, he has brought in, he has brought in tons of like different teachers, you know, like uh, uh, one of the one, if I was to say, you know, one of the best teachers that I have seen, you know, that he has brought in is uh, Felix Valencia. He's a Filipino martial artist and he's been, he was a very impressive, you know, individual. But, you know, you have, he had brought in so many different teachers and, 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 and you, and, and I had not, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have to like jump around to find this, you know, this other martial arts because he had brought it in. He had brought in all this other people and therefore you can like, you know, if you really open your eyes closely and watch how these people interact then you can, you know, you can pick and choose, like I said, and put in, you know, things in your back of tricks and understand that what you could, you know, what you could do standing, you could do it on the floor. You could do it sitting. You could do it in, in, in lying on your back. You could do it, you know, in different types of ways. And, and if you can't actually, yeah, like put this together, you can do it in every position, you know? So that's my, you know, little story. Yeah. Awesome. Now, if you had the opportunity to train with someone that you haven't, kind of flip okay. a little bit, who would you? And, and we can we can open that up to all of history, whether it's someone alive or or someone that's died. Who would you want to work with? Um, I would like to train with uh, um, what's his name, Inbalintuwak. 
It's um uh, it's his name is Bobby Ta to to I I, I want to pronounce his name right. Tobuada, I believe, is his last name. Um, he's he's a Filipino martial artist. I, I believe he's an amazing, you know, Filipino martial artist. Um, and in the Balin you know, it's it's it seems like you know, I it seems like you know, um, it's more direct. You know, it's it's close, it's closing, and I like closing fighting a lot. You know. Uh, close to gap and they have I've seen other Balintuak teachers and they have more like you know different um, range and how to you know how to enter in different ways and that's one of the systems that I would really like to study on that Mm -hmm. but he's one you know uh, Bobby Tabwada is is one of the instructors that I would like to really learn under great have you spent any time in competition? No, not at all. Okay. Is there you want a me reason? To tell you why? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, I'm not going to mention no names, but that's fine. I have see, I have gone to see like competitions. Um, even though competitions, you know, some of them they're great. You know, some of them, of course, you know, they they might allow you to like you know snap a you know stop, snap you know, some, some arms and things like that. But one of the, the things that I have seen in, in some competitions, um, how people just run and they don't stand and fight or, um, and they come out winning, you know, like first place. And I'm like, I'm trying to figure out, wait a minute, how did this happen? You know, I didn't understand. Um, um, I seen, you know, other competitions where they have too many rules. Um, I don't train for rules. I, from back in the days, as I can remember, um, my teacher was always, Peter Freeman would always, you know, encourage people to go in, hey, do you want to go in and do this competition? Go ahead. Next thing you know, they'll come back, oh, I was disqualified. Again, the the story will, re, will repeat it itself, and the reason why is that they stop you from doing what you would do to survive. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So, if 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 an arm is there and I have the 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 chance to snap the elbow or break the wrist, they're not going to allow me to do that. If I have the chance to like, you know, put my finger right into your eyeball. They're not going to allow me to do that. If I have the chance to, like, you know, snap your neck, well, they're not going to allow me to do that. Well, the guy in the street is not going to give a crap about, you know, <laughs> doing me in any way possible to kill me. You know what I'm saying? So I, I can't train myself to stop, you know, to stop my human nature from, you know, Put in, you know, my survival skills in the streets. Yeah. You know, the guy out in the street is not gonna, it's not gonna have no pity. He's not gonna stop himself from stabbing you. It's not gonna stop himself from like shooting you. It's not gonna stop himself from hurting you any way possible that he can. So I, when you train, and I again, this I, this may sound like a judgment, you know, but when you train yourself to not do something, you know, because of it is a, a, a sport, it is a game, it is this and it's that, a competition, and you put in rules into your brain, at some point in, 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 in time, because you're letting, that's, that's, how, that's how you're going to, you're going to fight, you're going to record things in your, your, in your mind that you're going to, at some point, it's going to come up. You know, it's going to come up and it's going to say, oh, you know what? I, I can't break this guy's arm. Or psychologically, do you have the courage to, like, really do that? You know, it's going to mess with your mind. So I think that competitions are great. But also, I think that it creates bad habits, too. Yeah, and certainly you're, you're articulating both sides of the debate. 
over competitions. Exactly. Yes. You know, and and Absolutely. they they aren't for everyone. Uh, I encourage people to to try them at, at least once mm-hmm. because I think that within the martial arts, you know, if we if we kind of go back to to the part that you agreed about, mm-hmm. you know, we're on the same mm-hmm. page that martial arts is about growing as a person. You know, and there are people that are are going to look at the self defense aspects of martial arts, mm-hmm. and that's going to be most important to them. For others, it's you know point sparring. For others, it's the the ability of self expression, developing their own forms. You know, and there's room for all of it. But I think Absolutely. it's important to know what's most important to you, and to make that a priority. And and you've clearly done that. And I think that that's great. Um, if I may, um, Please. you know, the, con- the the competitions that I see, it's, you know, it's within the school that that when you do the sparring, you know, the sparring sessions, you know, it's it's more you're looking at your strong and your weak points. And and even though you kind of you kind of stop in a little bit from going moving forward, but it, it's just a, it's just the same way that you're going to practice with your opponent. And you're gonna understand, you know, the 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 stopping points, the limitation that you should just stop because that person is gonna tell you it's gonna tap or it's gonna say break, it's gonna say this, it's gonna say that. And that could teach you just to know when to stop. But when you're doing out a, a public competition and you only just like slapping, you know, you slap in the chest or and they call it a point. I don't. I don't get that because you, you have to understand anatomy. You have to understand, you know, what it is that you're doing and kind of, you know, being in control. You know, even though the person might attack you, how to interact with that attack. You got to understand all of this, and 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 that kind. Of, a lot of the competition just looks to me like brawling. You know what I mean? Mm, There's absolutely. like really no science behind it. You know, to where you train so many years, and you know, and then you're gonna look like a brawler. Then it's you know, it's a little confusing to me. Yeah, I hear you. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. I appreciate you being being so open. Now, other than martial arts, do you have any hobbies? Is there is there anything about you as a person that you like to do? I my hobby my hobby is you know it's like um, going out to the woods. You know, I take my kids to the woods. You know, go take you know go to the movies. Um, from time to time, I you know somebody might you know ask me to come to the you know. Go. I don't really do no 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 hanging out like that. I don't hang out in the street. I don't hang out in the corners. I don't I don't I don't drive around with like group of people in my car because to me like now it has my car is my sanctuary. You know my car mm-hmm. is where I do my thinking, my meditation. You know my my guideline. What is it that I have to do now? I you know follow this, go there, do this, do that. You know and and so. I feel comfortable, you know, I feel comfortable. Not that I'm always alone because, you know, I'm not, I'm not really a loner. Neither am I uh, antisocial. I do socialize. Like I said, I I have met so many people, positive people. And they, you know, I look after them. They, they, you know, they, they tell me so many nice, beautiful, you know, things. And I'm like, Hey, you know, thank you. But, you know, I should just say this to you, you know, because <laughs> so, I look up to you as a teacher, as a, you know, as, as a friend, as a brother, you know, and and so, um, you know, it, it's is is really awesome. Yeah, that's great. Now, are you at all a fan of martial arts movies? Absolutely. Do you have any favorites? Uh. I had oh I got plenty I there's Jet Li I like Jackie Chan you know I like Jet Li Jackie Chan um, Bruce Lee of course uh, there's there's a, a whole bunch of I, I got a lot of them but I, one of my favorites is, is Jet Li I saw one of uh, uh, Jet Li movies back in the days um, it's in it's in I think it's in Chinese and. And it was really impressive because he was he was doing some jujitsu there, you know. Of course, you know they might call it like China 
and and some elsewhere. Uh, but it was really impressive, and I think that you know that kind of uh, it, it reflected you know a vision to wow you know this is how this is done you know yeah and I was like you know hey I am on the way and I like you know what he does because he's a he looks like a more direct you know individual on what he does you know what I mean so yeah I could say that he's one of my favorites awesome. How about books? You mentioned the Book of Five Rings. Are there any other martial oh, arts books that have been I have important to you? Martial art books. I have uh, well, martial art books. I have quite a few, but the um, the ones that my teacher at the beginning directed me to um, to uh, follow was like. Um, uh, my way of life. It was like the first one, uh, Karate Do, My Way of Life. It was like the first book that he actually um, encouraged people to read. Yeah. Uh, Abandoned Peace by by Ushiro Sensei. Um, there was quite a few um, martial art books that he encouraged us to like to read. You know, uh, but it's, uh, the way of the uh, my war, the way. Warrior Way, you know, it's in a Japanese book. Um, I, I can't remember a lot of them, but... It's okay. There are uh, so many. <laughs> there are so many. Yes, there are so many. And, and you know, I reading, I could say that reading is, is a very important factor of martial art because you can see how many, you know, all these masters what they have to do to become what they, what they are, you know, um, it'll give you, it'll show, you know, it'll show a seriousness, it'll show an encouragement, it'll show motivation on what you do, you know, and, and, and a lot of people don't read, unfortunately, you know, and they have to read. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody should be reading, I think, you know, and for some people, the, the structure of a, a physical book doesn't work for them. Well, there's, there's plenty of great free content on the internet or, you know, audio books or, you know, I mean, what we're doing here with a podcast, you know, prior to podcasting would have been done as, as a book. Right. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different ways, ways to get that. And, you know, I, I think that if you, the more, I think the more you expose yourself to the opinions of, of the greats, and and I'm certainly mm -hmm. not calling my, myself a great here by any sense, but you know you mentioned some some great names, you know I mean, eat that up as much as you can, right? Absolutely, and then you have to keep on researching because it doesn't stop there. You know, there's this. You know, I believe and honestly, um, as part of this universe, you know, because I always have question. You know, this. You know, going a little, I'm, you know, I might sound a little crazy, but um, we as human, you know, how is it that we, you know, I can't believe that we are as human, we can't really think in this whole universe alive, you know. Um, why would be, why would we, why in the world would be this only, from the only planet and the galaxy that it has people living and, and, what where we come from when it's a it's a huge question that everyone has, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, the more you look into like uh universal energy, uh cosmic energy, um, you know, you you start finding little pieces, beats and pieces of like, you know, kinda gives gives you an idea of what this human body it's it's for what is what's inside of this human body, you know, besides blood and tendons and, and ligaments and, you know, pressure points. So what happens after that? <laughs> Where are we going? You know, I mean, I, do we have a soul door? You know what I'm saying? I do. So there's a lot of questions that have to be answered that everyone, I'm pretty sure there's thousands of people that will ask themselves the same. And so, I look into other types of like training books, like, you know, uh, Sionic training manual, 
Um, I have quite a few I can mention. Um, you know, I I have, you know, the, like I said I earlier, I, I, well, I didn't mention it in, on, on air, but the limbic system, mm-hmm. what does, you know, what makes your body like moves or do all these reactions. Uh, I have tons and tons of different books that some I haven't even got, you know, got to them, but it's just like you start reading a book and then it'll tell you about another book. It'll tell you about another idea. And so I just keep putting, you know, titles on Amazon. And so it gets me different books, you know, it's called the soul sword. Um, it says the way and the mind of the same warrior, you know, has great stories. It has, you know, really strategy, you know, people don't, don't, don't think of, you know, and it's all part of like, it talks about like kind of like energy and talks about strategies that, that involves energy and spirituality and, and about what spirituality, you know, people say, you no know, mind, body, and spirit, but mind, body, mind, body, and spirit. So I work on my mind on my technical, I mean, I work on my physical, my technicals, my techniques, my, my, my strength. So what about the mind? Um, where is the mind, you know, falls into? Why? Because I think about, no, 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 no. That's not what, I don't really think that that's exactly what, they, what it means. You know, it's, you have to research what, what the mind is. I have a book that this gentleman talks about, you know, the mind. Um, looking right through my list here. I have a couple of books <laughs> that one talks about how the vital energy, you know, is the title of one, but I have a really, really good book here that is, it talks about this. It says people, most, you know, people often train the body and the spirit, but what about the mind? How do you train something that does not exist? Mm. Isn't that kind of like, wow, yeah. you know, and if you think about it, you have a brain, but where is the mind? What composes the mind? It's a deep thought. You know, so, yeah, it is a deep thought. So that's why I do, you know, I, I get all these books that it kind of makes me, here we go, I found it. It's uh, it's called Mind, mind Training for Martial Artists, A Short Guide on How to Get Results by... Uh, uh, Roddy Christen, Christensen and he's a really interesting individual you know because it's true how do you train something that it does not exist and so everybody talks about mind body and spirit so if the mind doesn't exist how what what is the mind mm. so people don't often like you know look into books to research okay the brain so nobody's for sure exactly how this brain works, but where's the mind? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you've given me a lot to think about and that, that's why I'm not so quite so quick with, with a response right now. And, and you just, okay. you, you set a lot of wheels turning. I'm going to have to check out that book and I'll drop a link for that for anybody that might be new to the show. The show notes are at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And that's where we put everything from photos to links to videos to, you know, you name it. It's over there, past episodes. So you can you can check that out there. Let's let's hey. move forward a little bit, and, yeah. and we're we're going to start to wind down here. But you're still training, right? I mean, you haven't stopped. You're still training. You're still active, and clearly, from the conversation that we just had, you're still pretty passionate about developing as a martial artist. So my question to you is why? What's keeping you motivated moving forward? Are there goals? Is there there something that you're striving for? Um, okay. If I may go back a little bit, um, I want to tell you a little story about, you know, my personal, you know. Sure. Um, when I grew up, when, you know, through the process of my, you know, evolution of changing my life around, um, when I started training, um, I started training with a bullet on my calf. Oh. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. Okay. So as so that you know, I've been a can a candidate of a new replacement for twenty going on thirty years. And I also have, you know, issues with my back. I have scoliosis. I have, you know, three herniated discs on my lumbar. And so I have been able to, you know, to keep up and work, you know, as I'm going on 54 years old, by the way. And so I have been able to, to train, you know, like this, it's like, you know, and, and, you know, as my teacher taught me, and he taught me really well. Thank you, sir. Um, to train around your injuries, not through your injuries. You know, otherwise, I, I would not, I would not be able to keep up. And so, you, even though people think that you have to train fast and 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 push, you know, forward fast and be faster and be faster. Faster, faster is not always the answer because. A lot of people that, that train fast doesn't mean that they're like the best, you know? Um, when you train slow, analyzing your every possible movement and you find a flow, how to train slow. And it's a fact of flow, you know, slow, finding a flow and a flow will make you as fast as, you know, you would not even know yourself how fast you can be because it's a self. It's a. It's a within self self defense mechanism that we all have and that we all we all possess, right? Mm -hmm. So what keeps me motivated to keep on training? It's my you know my age and my injuries and you know because I I see that the 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 older you get you know certain people are very fortunate not to have no kind of injuries and you know and they training be great in time that you happen to slow down you know that speed that you possess when you were 25 is no longer the same when you were 55 uh you know so my body has like told me hey you know you got to keep on training because you you know you can do this you 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 have to motivate your yourself, your mind, and 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 like they say, mind over matter. You know, it start the aches and pains. You know, they they exist. They're in your body and your physical body, and you have like notice forever, and you have adjust to, you know, to that point where okay, you know, it hurts here, but it'll go away once I start moving. It's gonna go away, and it has, and this is how it's been. You know, it goes away once you start moving. It does go away. You know, and. And that's where I find that connection and, you know, that connection with, with the energies around and the positive and the positive, you know, thinking that, you know, you can move forward, be 70 years old and, and you will be as fast as you can be because it's in you. And it's a, and it's a self, you know, self-defense response mechanism that, that you have and they, and, you know, I motivate myself because, you know, um, I don't think the guy in the street is going to care about, you know, whether I have injuries or not. And so I have to find new ways as, I, as I'm slowing down, you know, to make it more simple and very effective, you know? Yeah. That makes that's a lot of story. sense. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. So as we close up here, I like to ask all of the guests, if you could speak directly to the people listening, if you could give them some advice, what would you tell them? Uh, my advice is that, you know, I always like make comments about, you know, uh, people finding themselves in the martial art. And, and what I mean is not finding who you are as like a physical you know, challenger or become, you know, a bully or anything. Find this, finding yourself is becoming a better person, a better human being, understand about love. Because if you're only, you're training, and you're training uh, uh, to cripple or kill somebody, you know, God forbid it comes down to a situation, and you will be prosecuted because, you know, that's the law. <laughs> Those are the laws nowadays. You, you know, the, you're, 
your your assailant has your your assault and your attacker has a weapon. You take it away from him. You you slash his throat. You kill him. You are going to jail. So, you know, if you are just learning to hurt someone, uh, and you as a martial artist should understand how easily it is to hurt somebody. You know, you should also promote love. You should also promote, you know, uh, caring and, and encourage people to, like, you know, understand the balance, you know, between, you know, the what you're doing, uh, negative as a positive. You know, positive and negative, they walk along together. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The positive... Uh, the, the positive is always going to have a little point in time that it's going to turn into negative. And the negative is going to have some point in time that it's going to turn positive, like the yin and the yang. One can live without the other. You know what I mean? So I, I my message to the people is to not only just teach, you know, to defend themselves and their loved ones, but also, you know, care for the other ones, for for the less fortunate and the people who really don't have nothing, you know, don't pass by them. And just look at, look over your shoulder and think of them as trash. They're not trash. They're people. They're human beings. You know, and because they're just like got down to the bottom and the and the dirt, and and that doesn't you know make them any less than you are. You know, um, you know, just just like you know, it doesn't have to do with money. You know, it doesn't have to do with just like hey, you know, hey, listen, you know. Can I give you a positive advice? Can I give you? It's a gift. It's a gift of like you know, uh, learning is an art. It's 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 an art of giving, you know. And so you have you can encourage that person just by telling you know telling them something positive. You know, you can tell your story if you have that kind of story like I have, you know, and say, hey, you know, years ago I was, you know. I was sort of like on the on the bottom myself and and it took me you know some sweat and blood and 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 took me a humongous effort to stand up on my own two feet and say, "You know, hey, you know, I got better, I got better, you know, I deserve better, and I said it, I deserve better, and I am getting better. I may not be rich i i mean i I may not be rich, you know, but you know I'm rich." in a positive way. You know, I know people who are like, you know, great guys, they're they're awesome martial artists. I love them all, you know, and 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 it's and that's the other thing. They they people don't don't say I love you enough, you know. They're like, "Hey, you know, hey, I'll see you later. How about hey, listen man, you know, you're my brother. I love you." You know, even though hey, we're not it doesn't matter what race you are, it doesn't matter what color you are. Inside, we all look the same. We bleed. We have muscle tendons, and nine of them, they look, you know, either blue, yellow, white, or black. They're all the same, you know, and that's who we are, and we, you know, we should learn how to say, hey, you know, I love you, you know, like my brother. You know what I'm saying? And that's really important to pass on positive energy, and that's what a lot of people are lacking nowadays. Somehow, 157 episodes in, I'm still amazed at how powerful a catalyst martial arts can be. It's clear that Sensei Davila is passionate about martial arts, not only because it resonates with who he is, but because he owes so much to it, as many of us do. Thank you, Sensei Davila, for your time on the show today. Over at WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com, you can find the show notes, and you can follow us on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, and Instagram. Our username is Whistlekick. You should also check out our Facebook group, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, behind the scenes. A couple of you join every week, and we're glad to see you there. We're always open to new guests for the show, so if you want to come on or maybe suggest someone else, go ahead, hit the website. There's a form on there to do just that. If you have feedback, we want to hear it. You can do that on the website. You can do that on social media. You can do that on email, info at whistlekick.com, whatever works for you. If you like the show, be sure you're subscribing, and if you're up for helping us out, you can share the show. You can leave us a review on iTunes. You can join the newsletter list, join that Facebook group. You can like Whistlekick on Facebook, or you can purchase something over at whistlekick.com. We love the support. Remember, all those purchases have free shipping, even our wholesale orders. So check that everything out there, whistlekick.com. Until next time, train hard. 
smile, and have a great day.